and more of that to money and glory and fame. So everything is on the line here, Alex. Everything is on the line indeed. Of course, remember that uh, you could gain to that round of six by winning this game and then just one more series. But, well, that's something to talk about later because right now is the most important moment for these two players. And here we have in the southern spawning location, Varney Research Station. This is going to be the last game. And uh, everything on the line. It's the Red Terran Sealer. Managing to swing things back there. Playing a lot more aggressive this time. And his opponent here to the north. It is the Blue Zerg teammate. Odin is back. And Will he ooh. survive to the late game? That is the question. Because, like you said, that's that's where he truly seems to shine. As long as he can get those bases up and running. Now, where is this drone going? Because you might be afraid of Sela going for something shady. But is he really going for the 10 drone? Now, it's one thing to go for like 11 or 12. But I guess because he extracts the tricks... He, he gets out the earlier drone to scout with, and he's just going to make sure that he's not going to get two racks, but, well, it's uh, it's a very early scout, so he's uh, he's very cautious. 12-12 to open things up. So Sela is going to go into two Reapers, at least. Question is, did Odin manage to identify this? Actually going a little early to look for a command center there, so a bit, a bit of an unnecessary scout. But nonetheless, 12-12 to open things up here from Sela. Odin, though, going for a pool hatch first. There we go. Hatchery first, it will be. It's going to have to deal with the Reapers as they come in, but shouldn't be too too big of a deal. No, this is the standard. I mean, we as as we always see, though, that kind of uh, Reaper poke, it's almost every single time from a hatchery first from the Zerg, so no reason to freak out yet. Uh, but, well, we're going to see the pool started right away. No gas before pool. Did you see that from Jim, I believe, uh, just now recently? Yeah, he, he did the uh, like 14, uh, 14 pool. Uh, oh, that was the other game, I think. But there was one game where he went uh, hatch gas pool, I believe. Which is pretty cool. Because he gets 100 gas just as pool starts. Oh, uh, oh pops up, rather. As it, as it completes, and he can start that speed right away. Mm -hmm. It's something we see life do as he uh, gets his 15 hatch, then he goes 16, 16, which is 16 gas, 16 pool. And uh, what happens is that if you, it, it's kind of like a 14, 14. So if you ever seen a 14, 14, we've seen a lot in ZVP, for instance. What happens is that you get your gas, then you pool. So if you, you know your timings, if you get your gas, then a drone, then the pool, that's enough of a timing that you kind of perfectly time out getting 100 gas to, as the pool finishes up. It's like cute little details that really good to, to, to use or keep in mind rather if you want to if you're looking to optimize your play. Mm -hmm. First reaper out though here and uh, surprised to see no second one. He's gonna go right into factory and uh, stop adding <coughs> a couple of these marines, but he is actually supply block there for a second. Well, we see Odin going straight up to three queens actually. Sorry, I was th I was thinking four first, but that was three queens only. So, no reason to panic yet, at least. Let's see if he just goes to three queens and then the third base, which is kind of standard nowadays to get that early creep to man. Oh, almost getting that Reaper. That was close. Three health left, one hit away. So, Reapers do regenerate as you, go, as you know, guys. So, he's going to be able to stay alive here, stay in the field and get that scout of the third base. And that's fairly important here. Will be able to out, like, uh, Cut out any sort of uh, suspicions or other fears that Odin is going to be looking to go for some big pressure play. Yeah, well, see double gas taken. Nothing, yeah. nothing out of the ordinary yet. No, well, actually, one thing that is kind of um, out of the ordinary is not going for oh. the uh, the speed actually. So still slow links. Kind of late gas, and now we got two more and roach one. So go up to four gases right away. What? Okay, so so, so you know, as I said, I kind of in in trend. I, I just jinxed it. Yeah, you you jinxed it. So now, well, Odin is going for some uh, really interesting play. 
Problem is, he doesn't have really anything to defend with. And remember, the Sealer has seen that there's no speed out. So, going for this kind of uh, Gastus play is a, a bit of a risk, especially as if you go into Roaches straight away. And we do have a few uh, Marines here to help out together with the Hellions. But I think the three Queens, especially now that the Hatchery has finished, will be enough to sort of thwart this attack. But the big deal here now is going to be Sila, third command center. He has no idea about the roaches on the way. No, he, he really doesn't. Now, I don't think... No, don't see a lie yet. And we see fire roaches started already. Now, the queen's actually having a pretty hard time forcing this uh, little force to leave. But, well, the follow-up roaches should absolutely be enough to force the lead here. But he has to show the roaches, which is a bit annoying. Now, he'll just get the defensive roaches, now get the la. And it looks like he's going to do exactly what he did the uh, previous game with just getting that spy right away and then the evos with the upgrades. But that just puts him so far behind. Look at the e base already started here for uh, Sela and now comes the evo chambers. So a bit quicker this game. Yeah, so uh, that, he at least has that going for him, like you say. It will not be as far behind in upgrades. But when you do this kind of thing, like going up to those four gas right away, I personally would have preferred him to go for a bigger, t you know, for, go, go for some sort of assault play, start sticking on like 35, 40 drones. Yeah. And he hasn't even scouted the third command center, so just kind of staying in the dark, really. Yeah, Odin has scouted the, the bare minimum of uh, of the base of Sela, and uh, that's uh, he's just assuming kind of standard play, which is actually kind of what's coming up for Sela. And he hasn't seen any, um, Odin that is, hasn't seen any Halber play or Banshees yet. So he kind of knows that it's supposed to be just standard macro. And that double upgrade should be on its way. But look at this, Tenshi. He goes for the missile and Carapers. And as soon as La finishes up, he goes straight into the Hydralis Den as two more gases. So we're going to see Roach Hydra come out from Odin. And we haven't seen this today. Now he's making a good amount of overlords as well, so he's starting to prepare to have that supply free, so he can start churning out those units. He's nearing the drone count that he's looking for, 65. So, three more drones on the way, and then from there, and we're just going to see constant unit production here from Odin. I think he's just going to look, look to go for a big frontal assault with these uh, roaches and hydralisks. Mm, it is a, a very interesting style. Now, Roach Hydra isn't really a build, it's more of a style. So we can see a, a lot of different things absolutely come out here. But one big downside to this uh, this play, of course, is that you're not going to really have that great of uh, of drop defense. And uh, that's exactly what we see from Sealer here. To the right-hand side, two drop ships load up with Marines already on the way. It has two spores in position, and the Queen is ready, so... Maybe if he can uh, sort of force this way. He saw this actually with an Overlord, so he's even moved a few extra units in position here. One of these medevacs is getting very, very low. If you focus fires that, that means, well, full medevac. Oh no, he's going to be, he almost loses it. He needs to be so careful here. Yeah, he really needs to, and now it's going to be difficult to drop. Odin should leave a few hydras back, though. Oh yeah, most definitely. I mean, okay, there we see. Look, four in the natural, queens here in the main. And now these Medoax are kind of isolated. And well, we see Odin pushing on forward here with these speed roaches with that 1 1 upgrade. And not too much here for Sealer to defend with, I have to say. He only has one Marauder. And uh, well, the uh, the infrastructure here on the low ground should be killed off. A few uh, Hellbats won't be doing all too much here. At the same time, though, the drop does come down in the natural of Odin. And it's actually starting to kill off a lot. Not sure how they got past the Hydras. I think he, like, just pulled them back at the last second, but here we go, they do make their way back in, so most of the units have been cleaned up, but the danger here is at the very front of Sealer, will he be able to make the hold? A couple of Hydralisks actually made their way all the way down here southwards of the map, so they were able to support this attack, and the third base has been completely, uh, it's completely void of any SCVs, and he's forcing it to lift off, so he has to evacuate that for now, forcing Sealer up into his base, and look at this, the supply, Odin doubling his opponent. Yeah, not looking too good right now for Seal as he's stuck on two bases. Now, uh, Odin has to make sure that third base doesn't land. And technically, he can just constantly be making units and have them still at the uh, third base location as he has a few units back at home to uh, make sure this drop doesn't deal any damage. He has to make sure, though, he doesn't lose 
anything in his main because this drop is still very dangerous. Uh, eight marines, or rather ten marines here in these medevacs, with one one upgrades, two two on the way for Sealer. Will be very powerful, can do a ton of damage if left unattended. Well, Odin though is uh, going to go for that fourth base. Finally, 14 minutes in. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> finally it's a good word for it. And oh, the medevacs are getting low here. One of the medevacs med med does go down, the other one stuck in the corner just in time. Odin comes back and does deal with those. Now, Sealer is looking for that fourth base. Nothing in the gold. Going to go to the left hand side to look for the fourth base. But uh, Odin, well, he's uh, himself looking for any opening here to really deal damage back to Sealer. Medivac, by the way, did get taken out here in the main. Three, <coughs> three Marines making it out. Just oh. barely escaping with the lives, but they're gonna land in enemy territory, and that's not what you would be doing, so they will end up falling. Fourth was killed, by the way. Oh, that's a bit sloppy here from Odin. Not really. We've, we've seen that, like, he doesn't cancel his hatcheries. But now, this is a scary fight. The Archer is pretty good for the chariot to begin with, but these units. Hydras and Rotis to steal so much damage and there's just not enough on the ground. More units intercepting from the from the north as they sort of join up and now Sealer is going to send these four medevacs for a counter-attack but he's not going to be able to hold the front. No, I think this is the only thing Sealer can really do to try to threaten the uh, kind of semi-base trade scenario where he can kill off the, a lot of key structures. To be honest, right now uh, Odin just has to sacrifice his uh, third base and just go for this big attack, and Sealer must hold the high ground. If he lets Odin up, that is just going to be too much for him, and Odin, slow but surely, streaming up here. As he kills off the, kills off the barracks, all the units are going to come up, and that's too much for Sealer. Odin, in the end, takes this series after very shaky game two. Yeah, that means he's going to be our next player out of Group D to make it into the rounds of eight, ladies and gentlemen. So congratulations there to him.